Welcome to the Mando Fan Show, everybody. We made it. Book of Boba Fett is Whoa. over for now. <laughs> I don't know. It might be another season. Who, who the heck knows? But uh, thank you all for joining us today. We have a really great show for you. Uh, we're going to be talking about Chapter 7, In the Name of Honor, written by John Favreau, directed by Robert Rodriguez. Uh, sorry if that upsets people, but that's what happened. <laughs> uh, but thank you to everybody who has joined us live in the chat. We really appreciate it. If you happen to have social media and you don't mind sharing our tweets or our Facebook posts or Instagram or whatever to let people know and your friends, come on in. Let's have a good time talking about the latest chapter in Star Wars, which is the Book of Ophet Chapter 7. Uh, James and Lacey with me as always. And our guest is the founder of a great entertainment website slash film, and he's also a vlogger with his current venture, uh, Ordinary Adventures, documenting documenting experiences at theme parks with movies, magic, and more. Welcome to the show, Peter Serretta. What's up, Peter? Thanks for having me on, guys. I'm excited hey, to be here. I've uh, I've listened many times. I've I've met Lacey at a Star Wars celebration in a different country. And, yeah, um... <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and D23. Oh, yeah, D23. All show, the yeah. craziness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's good to have you joining us for this one. Um, should be a fun one. Uh, this was a pretty wild episode in terms of action. Um, certainly a lot of mixed reaction from fans. Uh, so a lot to get into, and we're going to do that as we always do. Um, if you uh, want to get your comments featured on the show, as a guarantee, we do have Super Chats available. Those also go to help support our podcasts. So thank you for those. And don't forget about... Uh, shortly after we go through our ratings and the Tamara Morrison scale, uh, we will be getting into the Mando code. Uh, so I hope you have cracked your knuckles and you are ready to be the ultimate bounty hunter to win that prize. But um, let's get into this now. Uh, we are, will rate the episode. If you are new to the show, we have a little fun with this. We go from zero to ten Tamara Morrison faces. Uh, those shiny white teeth and that bald <laughs> tan head post back to tank, fully healed, ready to oh, yeah. warm our hearts with uh, his lovely soul. So, <laughs> like a band. Um, yes, right. So, we'll rate this one first. James, you're up this week to kick things off. So, you get to set Ooh. the bar on chapter seven. What did you rate this? And uh, briefly explain why. Yeah, so I gave it uh, an 8.5, and this was actually, I'll say this, this was the first week that I've responded quickly when John was like, hey, what was your score this week? I was like, it's an 8.5. I don't know, it just felt right. Whereas almost every single week, I'm like, I don't know, man, I got to think about it. Uh, I don't want to go nine, you know, or whatever. Right. Um, and I think just part of that came from like, I gave one episode a nine, I give the next one a 9.5, and then I'm like, you know, I think I'm with everybody in the sense of like chapter five, chapter six. Whoa, what were the expectations? <laughs> and coming back to this, I'm looking at it and I'm going realistically, I think this episode holds so much weight in the series, but um, I have to be realistic with like what I, you know, what I, what I'm actually looking at. And there was so much odd things at times that I was like, oh, okay, you know, I got to pull that score down, but 8.5 for me still being a high score. I liked the episode and I had a lot of fun with it for sure. Right on. All right. Uh, Peter, our guest, what did you give this episode and uh, briefly explain why? 
Well, I feel bad being here because I'm usually the most positive Star Wars fan Uh-oh. in the room. <laughs> and I know that you guys are like such a positive force in Star Wars fandom and so enthusiastic. And I usually like love that. But we're here for honesty, though. I want to make that clear. We, <laughs> yeah, I am we honest are. when yeah. I don't like something. So no worries. Yeah, um, <laughs> I give this a, a, a six out of ten. Um, I I didn't dislike it. I, you know, the word is it's not disappointment. It's um, underwhelming is, is yep. the word for me. Mm-hmm. I think um, it did come in heavy with the action, but I don't think any of it was like ev- like really inventive or fun like. There was moments, which I guess we can talk about later, um, that I, I liked. But I think, you know, I was a person that was all season being like, people were like, what is this show? It's doing these flashbacks. It's weird. Now that you have these two episodes with, with Mando, what is going on? And I'm like, oh, don't we worry. It's all going to come together in the end. It's going to be it's going to be awesome. And I, I feel like this is the last chapter of the book. And. I feel a little burnt and maybe that affects my score a little bit. So I don't know. I don't feel like it all comes together in the way I want it to. And I also think Robert Rodriguez is his three episodes of the show uh, were the worst directed <laughs> episodes. Like, I don't know. It, it's, You're not alone there. A lot of people yeah, think that. So, yeah. And and I'm, I'm someone that got into film and filmmaking because I read Robert Rodriguez's book about his first film and I, I loved his early career. So it's not like I'm a hater. I'm not sure. Yeah. Not, yeah. So um, and uh, really quick, uh, I, I hate saying this about any director because, you know, the Star Wars fandom is very weird about things and to create anything is hard to get a movie or a TV show made is very hard. Um yeah. I understand that, so it, it, it hurts me to be like, I wish, I hope he doesn't make more Star Wars stuff because <laughs> I see people say that about other Star Wars directors, and I'm oh, like, yeah. it seems really toxic and whatever. But like, I don't know. I just when yeah. I hear that, I generally <laughs> think that it means something along the lines of like, I don't wish ill will on him. It's yeah. just like with all of the other options, like it's kind of like, do, do you want to see uh, this character have their own show? And you're like, no, it's like, <laughs> it's not that I don't want to see it. It's just that if, if I only get one show, that wouldn't be the character I chose. You know, if I only get so many directors to direct star Wars, I saw Robert Rodriguez. Let's, you know, I, I prefer maybe yeah. somebody else. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. I, I, I love, quentin tarantino i don't want him anywhere near star wars it's just <laughs> so, yeah. sometimes it doesn't fit um, the weird thing is i i thought robert rodriguez has been kind of like i'm gonna use the word like lazy it's, it feels like he's been kind of sliding by for years but then mando season two his episode was awesome you you could feel the hunger like you could feel yeah. the like him being a star wars fan and the excitement and then i with this series i felt kind of disappointed by you know, and and a lot of people have that feeling too, and 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 you put it in a in a good way because, like you said, you know, it's easy to be the armchair quarterback and just sit there uh, with your phone on Twitter and just be like, Robert Rodriguez is a terrible director, as you do nothing, and, and but it's just and you put it in a point to say like, you know, it takes a lot to do what these people are doing, and there's elements of it that are great, but sometimes it's just maybe not a fit. So I, I yeah. you're completely reasonable in saying that, I look past the directing and i gave this episode a nine because as i was watching it i felt like i was on a thrill ride and just like seeing the rancor and the the king kong like reference as it's yes. climbing the tower and holding on to the guy and launches the guy as a Wilhelm wilhelm scream lets loose and then you have peli motto with the rickshaw droid and mando's telling her to get out of there there's a lot going on and i just I like the camaraderie between Boba Fett and Mando and stuff like that. So I'll get into more of my thoughts later, but uh, I thought it was a really fun ride. It felt very Star Wars to me, felt very tribute to uh, the serialized uh, campy type of stuff George Lucas probably was looking to do initially before Star Wars became this juggernaut. So, um, but I, I'm not yet. And I, I kind of agree with you, Peter, in terms of like some of the directing choices with some of the scenes, but uh, I stuck with what I liked and gave this one a nine, which I know a lot of people are going to eat me alive for giving it a high score, but there we are. As um, you say that. Lacey, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I gave this episode a 9.5. I really enjoyed Ooh. it. 
Now, I'm mm-hmm. going to preface this with I've only watched it once. And I watched it at like, I don't know, like 8 a.m. after not sleeping all night. So maybe mm-hmm. that was part of the reason I loved it so much. <laughs> However, uh, I did. Lacey enjoy- had the uh, poison lizard or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> which is watching it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I did enjoy uh, the Grogu parts and the Rancor parts and not yeah. everything else. So maybe that's what's affecting my score. Like the slow-mo catch of, of Grogu. Like I loved it. And then the ending, which we'll get into our favorite parts later. Mm-hmm. I loved. Uh, I thought the Rancor was really well done. I just, I think my critique to it compared to last week's, which I think is the best episode of the season was the Luke episode. Um, is that I felt that there were a lot of different things and it just kind of, it wrapped up too neatly in a bow for me. I think that there were a lot of things that you could have left to be answered later. Um, and then there were things that were kind of left that shouldn't have been left. Uh, mm-hmm. It was just weird. But I loved the Rancor stuff and Grover. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So between the four of us, that rounds us out to an 8.25. Let's see those Thames. Like James even made the update. I'm not going to say who updated their <laughs> score before we went on air. I'm not going to say it, but he made a quick, quick update to the graphics. So thank you, James. <laughs> As Peter just outs himself. <laughs> no need for a bounty. Peter's like, it's me. It was me. Uh, our 8.25 for us. Uh, James, let's see what our patrons gave this one. They gave it a 7.4. Seven point four. So the patrons a little critical this time. They've been on fire lately, giving some high scores. But uh, let's get into a couple of their comments to see what they thought and get a little uh, pulse of what where they're at. So uh, first one is Brennan Epperson. Uh, thank you, Brennan. Um, he's new to our Patreon. He said, "My first time voting in the Mando Fan Show. Yes, it is." Uh, he said, "I'm giving this finale a solid eight tem- tems." Uh, but I think history may remember it being even better because of the moments. All right. Thank you, Brennan. Uh, and our next one here, Nick Treitman said, after sleeping on it, I'll give it a seven out of 10. It's the best of the Rodriguez episodes, but still not as good as the last two and possibly the train heist. I literally don't remember episode four. So, <laughs> <laughs> so some people, yeah, there's going to be a lot of mixed reactions. And I think it. that's what we're looking at here. <laughs> Uh, but thank you for those. Um, and Lacey, I know you probably want to get to some super chats before we dive into uh, the giveaway. Yeah, so we do have some super chats. So first we have Double D. Thank you so much. Who said, just wanted to say, hey, and here's five bucks for being such badasses. And come May 25th, we're waiting. <laughs> and come we're on, badasses? May 25th, we're waiting, LOL. I yeah. think I think Double D has a, an idea of where the story is going to go, just looking at his icon there. Yeah, his little Grogu oh. Mandalorian combo. Oh. Love that. Uh, yeah, we can't wait for May 25th either. We're all reeling about the Kenobi announcement, and mm-hmm. we're going to be doing some type of weekly thing with that. We don't know what the name is or anything yet, but yeah, pumped for that thank you so much so next we have gary 24 fan thank you for the super chat who said thank you for these shows the last seven weeks and for welcoming me i found a new favorite star wars channel and you've made this old fart happy well, i'm so glad <laughs> gary. you're not old don't say that about yourself i'm all about making old farts happy so thanks gary <laughs> next we have andrew staley hey andrew we love Andrew hey, what's up, man? here in the community. Uh, he said, enjoyed the Mando Fan Show for Book of Boba Fett. Thanks. See you in Anaheim. You will see oh. all of us in Anaheim. All four Andrew, I'm buying you a big beer this time. Big <laughs> John's beer. like Absolutely. beer tab is like off the chart. <laughs> I, I, know. Yeah, I, promise too many. I was backing out of being canceled again. I promised way too many drinks to people. I'm going to have to go and watch all of Peter's videos so I know like what to get in the park. <laughs> Uh, mm-hmm. Next is Aaron. Sure. Hey, Aaron. Thank you for the super chat. We said expected more, no plan, spread their already thin resources around the city, then hid behind the same ve- vehicle to give the pikes an easy target. Target <laughs> shaking my head. There was a lot of lack of planning. Like I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have made those choices. <laughs> anyway, like guys, thank Star you Wars. so much for your super chats. Really appreciate it. Yes, mm-hmm. thank you to everybody. Um, and now before we get into our main discussion where we're just going to open it up and the four of us are going to chat about this episode and see what comes of it, it is time, folks. It is time for the Mando Code, our season-long giveaway contest. Every week I gave away a single number. It is out of order. 
Uh, but the winner of the Mando Code Bounty will win the Star Wars Black Series Boba Fett Rearmored Wearable Electronic Helmet. So glad that's the last time I have to say that. Um, <laughs> I revealed the sixth number in the code last week. Uh, so this is it, folks. I hope you are ready because the final number in the code is one. And the time has also come for you to submit your guesses of what the Mando code is. So we'll now accept your Go. guesses at... Don't put them in the chat. I know some people are trying to put it in the chat right now, I bet. Our email, resistancebroadcast at gmail.com. Lacey is going to monitor that. And the first person to correct, correctly unscramble the code and let us know what it stands for, so both those things, will win. Uh, and I have a feeling that will happen very soon, if I had to guess. So can I just say that say. Brian Ward said we should name our show Kenobi Fan Shobi. And can I tell you that that's what we have been place holding it, calling it <laughs> for the past like two years? Kenobi Shobi. Shobi. <laughs> Do it. Shobi one Kenobi. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh my right, gosh. So yeah. We already have someone. There's so, Are you ready? Oh, wait. Yeah. Do they have, the, they filled both requirements? They have given me their answer and they've emailed at zero minutes ago. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay. The winner is, well, first of all, the answer is Jeremy Bullock's birthday. That is the code. And the winner is Lucian Starkiller. Whoa. Which is Lucas Corbin, bearded underscore toy underscore guy. Congratulations. Congratulations. So yeah, the number wow. he was Un fast. That <laughs> yeah, when it he... says when you're when you get an email and it says zero minutes ago, it's yeah. He was quick. Um, and I apologize because I see three other people did it at the same time and he just got in there before you guys. That's you gotta yeah, be quick on the crazy. draw. Look what happened yeah, to that's what we look what happened to Cobb Vanth. <laughs> look what yeah, happened so to the number, yeah, the number was Two one six one nine four five for February sixteenth, nineteen forty five. Jeremy Bullock, the original Boba Fett's birthday. So, uh, congrats to Lucian. You are winning that helmet. So we'll get in touch with you and get that out to you. And congratulations! Thanks congratulations. everybody for playing along. Thanks for playing. Uh, we'll probably do something for the uh, Kenobi, Kenobi show, uh, <laughs> whatever that ends up being called. <laughs> maybe maybe our giveaway will be who can give the best nickname <laughs> for our show. But anyway, let's get to it now. Let us talk about this episode. Um, we'll start. We'll, we'll, we'll. I'll set you up on a T, Peter, and set you up on a train of positivity here. Did okay. you have a your favorite moment, favorite line, or favorite shot from this chapter, uh, chapter seven? I have two favorite moments. Nice, okay, cool. Uh, number one, when the two Mandalorian or Boba, I guess. Is Boba Fett a Mandalorian? I guess he technically mm -hmm. isn't. But the two uh, Mandalorian armored characters uh, kind of fight together. And it's almost like this Battle of New York Avengers assemble yes. kind of moment. I was yeah. like, yes. The camera spin around them, right? Back yeah. to back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Love that. that. And then was, the second moment uh, is the Rancor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Rancor was amazing. Um, but uh, Lacey, how about you? I think you kind of teased what your favorite moment was just a few minutes ago. Yeah, so I feel bad because people in the chat were like, if it's not, you know, Grogu <laughs> sleeping with the Rancor, then I quit. Like, Lacey, you're an idiot, whatever. <laughs> they didn't say that. I added the idiot part. I exaggerated. Um, my favorite moment was the end where Mando's in the ship, which we all knew was coming with that little, like, peephole. Uh, I was cracking up. I laughed so hard at this part where he's just like, dink, 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 dink. And he's like, no. And he's like, ding, ding. Like, that's my humor. That is my yeah. humor right there. Just like, ding, ding. Oh, it was so <laughs> did, good. Did you, what were you, like, what did you think he was knocking for? That's a good question. I didn't think it was to blast off like that. But once he did it, I was like, this makes sense. Because he's just like, <laughs> yeah. Because it's kind of like going back to Mando season one where he's on the speeder bike. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what I, I kind of was like, is he going to open the thing? I was like, that doesn't make sense. They're in space. <laughs> I was not really sure what it was, but yeah, no, I loved that. That whole Move little ahead. bit. They could have left that out and we could have just ended, but they yeah. didn't. And I love that. I thought like snacks or something. I had no idea. Yeah, it was going to be, I think for... I, my brain was going towards like a food or a snack food. or something. Yeah. Um, all right. That is a good moment. Um, James, how about you, buddy? 
Um, I mean, we'll get into it more, but I just, as we talk through the episode, I'm going to be like, see, that's why like, I like this episode because it has that moment in it. It has this moment in it. It has that moment in it. And it's like, it's hard to rank them because they're all like pretty big things that when you think back to the season, you're going to be like, oh, that happened in the show. That happened in the show. Oh, wait, all of that stuff was in one episode. That's pretty crazy. Um, but I think if I had to pick one, I'm just probably going to go with the the Boba Fett Cad Bane uh, standoff. The you could say both of them, but like obviously the second one um, because I don't know. It's kind of just crazy to think like that it went down that way. It was something that had been led up from the Clone Wars for a very long time. Um, and like we've said on this show, like if you have a character that is a fan favorite character, you're going to kill them. Or they're going the, the end of their story is going to be told in live action if possible. Yeah. And so I'm looking at Cad Bane and I'm looking there and I'm like, not surprised at all that like he's he's gonna die because you know, like what like do you want him to live through the situation and run away and then get more Cad Bane stories where he dies in like a book or a comic or something like that? I'm like, come right. on, let's just let's kill him on screen, live action, do him the justice. And let Boba Fett be the one that does. It just all made sense to me. So I was yeah. pretty happy with how that all rounded out. I, I'm i going to go with the Cad Bane face off with Boba Fett too. Just because. And I don't even know which part of that. I must want to say. Like early on before they actually face off. When it's like the first face off that doesn't end up in in fighting True. where yeah boba fett has his hand and he's in that classic boba fett position where he's resting his hand on his rifle and you have fennec shan behind him trying to like coax him into not doing anything and he's like i could take him and i just got the feeling of old boba fett creeping back in just like feeling That's insulted point, yeah. and, and and then like that the cad bane who had treated him a certain way back when he was younger maybe more naive and he's like this is my time to get my vengeance on him like you saw that old this wasn't like a bantha boba fett which is fine i like that boba fett too this was old boba fett creeping back in and i kind of like that a bit and uh it was very western to me a lot of close face shots and uh i i, I good bad and the ugly type stuff uh, high love, high tension i really like that moment i yeah. loved the representation of cad bane being the person that's like this is the old boba fett you're a killer you know you yeah, can't change yeah. kind of thing yeah. and he's fighting with it because at the core that is his blood he's Django fett you know and they all that coming out all that rage being there and him being the bigger person flipping back into his you know rested position and stuff it's like whoo, like there's so much tension there you know and like yeah. to actually have him actually defeat uh defeat him you know by saying uh you know there, there's i've collected a family family is more important i'm not a loner you know and kind of stuff right so, and it's then, also cool and then the levity immediately hits as david pesquisi comes out and he's like that was a great <laughs> display of you know of being <laughs> yeah. reserved and, and i love that character I, I thought i was gonna hate him when i first met him i don't know how you felt about it peter but i thought pesquisi was so funny for some reason it, it just and and Pally Motto too, like all these characters who I think annoyed me early on. I'm like, all right, I like you. Oh, Pally was so good. Yeah. But uh, anyway, all right, let's just open it up and talk about it. Um, it's uh, I'll just start off by saying I I get what you were saying, Peter, about how you were at the last chapter of the book and you felt maybe unfulfilled or you didn't get like the closure to the how you would if you read, read the end of a book. But I don't know if this is like the end. So it's, I, I don't know if that was Favreau's like trying to like, I want to tie up some things, but some things I want to leave open. Like, do you think, do you think that is any element to that that can ease the burden or do you think they still needed to sort of shut the door on this more? Well, I mean, I think we'll see more of this character in this Mandalorian verse, but it seems like there's a, like all the loose ends on Tatooine have been, tied up at this point right like the three crime families are gone uh there's not going to be any spice trade on the planet the the pikes are not coming back as far as we know and the four if you consider the uh huts as well who left oh, yeah. early in the season yeah yeah do you think so do you think he's like the the Cobb Vanth thing at the end 
mm. where he's like going to get a mod shoulder or whatever that is. Like he's clearly alive. Do you, do you think Boba Fett's like leaving it to him or do you think Boba Fett's going to stick around and still do his thing? Where are you at with that? You know, I, I was, I have a podcast called Slash Home Daily and I was talking to my co host on that today and that did not even occur to me until like it, it, they, they brought it up because it wasn't like that scene happens where Boba Fett says, I forget what the line was. He was like, uh, it's not for us. And she says, if not us, then who? Yeah. And then, um, you know, a few scenes later in the mid credit scene, we see the Cobb van thing. So I didn't really connect the dots between that. I took that more of him being like, I didn't expect to be in this situation. I'm, I've, my whole life been a bounty hunter and now people are like bowing to me on the street and giving me fruit. And by the way, that fruit thing I think um, is interesting because this season they've kind of played with the melons in a way where, you know, he comes back from death from the Sarlacc pit and he's captured by the Tuscans and he sees the, the Tuscan chief drinking that black melon and he's like, oh, I want to be a leader. The The chief gets to drink the water, which is the most, you know, sought after thing on Tatooine. Right. And then later right. he helps them and the chief gives him the melon. And now yeah. he's at the end of this. He's earned the respect of everybody. Uh, one of the assistants brings over not even the dirty, gross, milky black melon, <laughs> whatever, but <laughs> uh, Melorunin. And, uh, you know, maybe now he's realized this is not what he wanted after all yeah it's a good point mm-hmm. and he tosses it to to black or Santon and says here you eat it and uh, he gladly did but that you know it's funny because in promoting this and it, like i feel like this show is a blend of western and gangster and i think at some points they weren't sure which button to hit but <laughs> he, like rodriguez was like the godfather the godfather heavily inspired yeah. by the godfather and fruit is a big thing in the godfather because when don corleone gets shot up he's looking at oranges and then at the end of the movie, spoiler alert for a 48 and 50 year old movie, <laughs> he, he has he's chasing around his grandson with the orange peel in his mouth and he drops dead in the garden. Uh, it's the you know, those symbols. I you know, I'm not sure that that was on purpose, but the point you're bringing up here about the fruit being uh, a symbol is made me think of that immediately. Well, it's not like a direct uh, correlation yeah. to, to a Corleone story, mm-hmm. but it's certainly, again, that symbol of that figure and the different points in their life and when he got shot down and when he, when he finally passed and Boba Fett, like you said, when he rose up uh, and got the respect from the Tuscans to when he sort of maybe passed the torch by tossing the, the melon to uh, Black Chrysanthemum, which I don't think Black Chrysanthemum's taken over the empire or the crime <laughs> empire, but yeah. Cobb Vanth is snoozing. So we can't take the melon right now, but uh, that, I don't know, James, I, James Lacey, what do you think? Do you think Cobb Vanth's going to be the guy? Yeah. Um, you do? I was distracted by this comment, by the way, that having R2 drop off Grogu is passive aggressive as F. <laughs> oh, by Luke, just being like, I'm not going to go. Which hey, we need I'm to Luke get Skywalker, into. Grogu. I'm not going back to t- Tatooine. I'm not going <laughs> back to that true. sand. That's planet. true. Why would he go back there? Yeah, that's a good I point. definitely think I'm going to comment on Cobb for first, but I think we need to definitely get into Grogu's choice because that's a big part of this episode. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, I think that's pretty obvious that that's what Cobb Vanth is going to become is the kind of person that's the daimo i've heard it say like six different mm-hmm. ways that word it's is one like of those the, things where you can be like Han of the, the daimo and you're like some of them say daimo and then some, <laughs> some say daimo and then some right. say i don't know whatever the leader guy <laughs> the job of that guy of uh <laughs> yeah. tatooine i think that's what they're insinuating there um that but it is interesting, though, that over the course of the series, you have someone that's a bounty hunter, then they don't want to be a bounty hunter. Then at the end, they're like, you know, I don't think I want to do this anymore. And it's like, <laughs> make up your mind, man. Like, what are you doing here? What's going that's, on? But I think they that need was, that because it sets up for him to go off to do something else. That was probably if I had a, a big negative, like it, it, not like negative in the sense of like, I didn't really like this scene because there's a couple things like that. But big negative of like the feeling of the story the theme of this this particular chapter was like every single episode was i intend to rule with respect i'm the leader i'm the king i'm the person who's running this planet (laughs) you know all of this stuff it was like he absolutely wants this and down to fights in this that's like I am a leader. I am here. This is my planet. I'm holding my ground, all this stuff. And then finally, when they win, he goes, no, 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 it's not for me. 
you know, and I was like, <laughs> it's like after what? all that you destroyed the city, sir. Yeah. And I was <laughs> like, OK, I need to spin some that positively. And like there's so many stories where like you work really hard for something and the choice is right in front of you. But along the way, you've learned something else like you uh, meet a significant other and you choose them over the, what you thought you wanted or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. There's plenty of stories like that. But that's me trying to spin it. And I did feel a little bit like, so what are we doing, Boba Fett? What was all the war for? Like, so you know much what it made of this me could have of? been solved had you realized that an hour ago. Yeah. Not, no joke, yeah. you know? You know what it made but, me think of? Team America World Police, the beginning of the movie where they go to France and they just destroy Paris, <laughs> France. And then they're like, way to go, team. Freedom. And then they just leave. And <laughs> yeah. Congrats, France. You're free. Yeah. <laughs> just looking at the death and destruction in their wake. Yeah, and they're yeah. just like, and they're like, way to go. And they just take off in the plane. Like, that's what I thought of with Boba Fett being like, I'm good. All right, team. High five. Here's a melon. Yeah. People but died. I, but I did. I did think that exactly. I I, I didn't realize it was going to be Cobb Vanth. I was like, oh, but they're going to get somebody else to kind of rule over or whatever. That makes sense because then you can have Boba Fett leave and do other things and kind of explore Boba Fett beyond right. him being like. Because what if you want Boba Fett in your shows? If you want that character to continue and Tamara Morrison to continue to be part of this world you it would be tough to just like have them have, have him constantly sit on that planet and be like i can't leave you know right i rule this area i'm not leaving here you know whatever so it's like i kind of understand it's to kind of keep him around or whatever but you know it kind of felt a little strange at the end there simon got it right he said bonjour everything is born <laughs> <laughs> that movie is so ridiculous so let's talk about grogu then Grogu, did he make the right choice? That was yeah, the Peter, big... what do you think? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I don't think anybody likes the absolute. Um, given that choice of like you can't have attachment, like I don't know that that seems as absurd to me as like some of the stuff that the Mandalorians being told by that the sect <laughs> that he's in. Like it seems like two extremist point of views. Yeah, and I mean, we've also we've already seen what happens to luke's jedi academy and we've already seen how that works out or doesn't work out so I, as he Dude, says in yeah. that movie um you know me, maybe the jedi didn't have everything right maybe they're like you know the ideology of some of this stuff is good but maybe not these rules which i don't know i think is some of the best stuff that george lucas did like talking about religion and stuff like that too yeah mm -hmm. that, i mean that's a good point because we still have luke who's um very subscribe to what he thinks the jedi is supposed to be based on what was passed down to him and uh very connected to the jedi at their the peak of their um i don't want to say ego but i can't think of a better word during the prequels and he's saying you have to make this choice where uh then like you say the jedi we meet in the last jedi is a very different guy based on what happened to that temple quite literally burned it down along with all of his thoughts about how it should be <laughs> um i'm glad that he chose mando for uh, you know the obvious reasons that they set up um, with the ship and the little pod, and that's going to sell a billion action figure sets, and we get that. But I, I, how do you think about? All right, so Peter, what do you think about this? Because we were talking about this. Um, By the way, you, you mentioned action figures. If they, yeah. if Sideshow does not make that <laughs> that 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 Rancor sleeping with with Grogu oh, like as a statue, yeah. Yeah. like what are yeah. we doing here? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hallmark has to make that an ornament like that has to be on a lot. Of, there's to be sweaters with that. Uh, but in terms of, you know, when they were doing Mandalorian season one, which I almost forget that Werner Herzog was in it. That's how like long ago it feels mm -hmm. is he pushed them to like stick with the puppet, stick with the puppet, keep, you know, do the puppet as much as you can. That's the real living, the breathing thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. George Lucas holding the puppet. It's like, it's become this big deal. Um, if he were to choose the Jedi way, you know, they did CG with Yoda with the lightsaber, but would they have to go full CG with Grogu? And would they do that? And do you put a, a, a lightsaber in the puppet's hand? Probably not. Like, I, I think that the, the, that's another part of the reason maybe why that they, that they did this. I don't know. Yeah. Keep it simple. Keep it cheap. You can, yeah. I mean, not that this show is cheap or any of these shows are cheap, but <laughs> no, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, keep I, it. 
I, I think like effective, like, and they're like, if we yeah. go full CG route, we possibly lose the emphasis of somebody being able to physically cuddle or hold this object, which feels very real when we see Mando holding him, but it doesn't feel as real when we see him flipping from stone to stone. It's cool. And we're glad that it's there because it's part of the story. But I think if the more they move into that territory, the more it be, it becomes detached from the audience. Yeah. And he's, but I still, I still think it's, I, I, I don't know. I'm, I feel weird about the, he chose the chain, but I, you know, I don't know. Well, also like, they that can't, wasn't my guess. They can't overdo this AI Luke because, and if, if he did choose that way, then you're either getting a lot more AI Luke or you're getting no Grogu. And there's no way Disney's going to be like, yeah, screw Grogu. Don't worry about it. Like they, 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 they want him in as much <laughs> as possible. So I think if they overdo it with the AI Luke, that becomes less special. That shine becomes off that apple. Then when we see it, we're like, oh, there it is again. Like we're doing that with Luke again. I, I like well, the, the small spurts of it. Uh, and I think, you know, if he went with him and we had to like check in with him all these times, it would kind of lose its magic and luster. Mm -hmm. And I thought they did an amazing, like Peter, what do you think about that? Uh, I know it's not this episode, but oh, yeah. you haven't been on the show. So I, I, I want to hear your opinion on, on, on the Luke thing. Cause some people don't like it. Some people wanted to recast. Where were you with, where do you stand with bringing Luke back and how he did it? I mean, I didn't like how he looked in the Mandalorian season two, but it was effective for what was needed at that time in the last episode. Amazing. Um, mm -hmm. oh, the yeah. voice is a little off for me, which I guess it was made by a computer. It seems like very like mm -hmm. without emotion. Yeah. Um, like that a GPS be or something. Yeah. But the one thing I wanted to ask you guys about is one thing that bothers me about this season in its relation to the Mandalorian is I kind of hate when TV shows they'll do this thing where they end the season in a way that it's going to completely change the show. Like, you know, someone's been fired. They're it's going to completely change the dynamic of the show. Usually then, writers then, leave. That's the thing is that all the writers leave <laughs> and then the show's completely different. <laughs> but then like in the, ep the first or second episode of the next season, everything gets restored to status quo in some like roundabout True. way. Oh, uh, yeah, like, and um, listen, I didn't ever expect there to be a Mandalorian season without Grogu. I mean, you need Grogu <laughs> in that show. So yeah. I wasn't like hoping for that because I love Grogu, but I, like the emotional impact of then giving up Grogu at the end of Mandalorian season two, I feel like it's undercut that he's he's already back with him before we get to Mandalore in season three. Hundred percent. So yeah, and part of that to me was why last week I know you weren't here, Peter, but like yeah. last week I was the only one saying I think he's going to choose the lightsaber. I think there's kind mm -hmm. of a twist here. He chooses the lightsaber this week. Seemingly, while my theory of how all that went down. To end quickly to summarize is he chooses the lightsaber and not din and because he made that choice luke gives him the the armor anyway because he already made that choice so he kind of has both um like the plan was never to be like one or the other it was like I make the decision under the impression that you only have one or the other and it was the test so he chooses the right answer and he gives him the armor anyway it was kind of what i was thinking but it seems that the story is very much like no he chose the armor that scene still could happen the way that it did. Maybe he did choose the lightsaber and then Luke was like, that's a good choice. I admire it. But I think personally you need to be with the Mandalorian or something. We don't know how it went down. And it, yeah. It's, but it's, I still, yeah, it's just, there's something about, um, I actually, I forgot where, 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 where we were initially going with that. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> we, I think we've, we've kind of talked about that though. Like how I, I had said, like, I think, because we didn't know for sure Grogu was going to show up in Book of Boba Fett. So we had a discussion oh, that's, about yeah. Mando season three. And we were saying like, he can't be out of the gate back. It has to be at the very end of the season. Yeah. There has to be time to show the sadness, the void, all that stuff going on in the Mandalorian. Like, because when he, sh when the Mandalorian showed up in the Book of Boba Fett, they were playing ominous music. He was like <laughs> cutting guys in half who were already dead. I was like, mm -hmm. this guy is unhinged because he lost his son. And this is what we're seeing now. 
and, that, and then he then he gets him right back and he's like so yeah, I, I'm that was here, ultimate, I'm 100 with you i'm 100 that was ultimately my point part of the reason i would think he would choose the lightsabers because that means grogu has yeah, to be gone right, for longer right. Um, and him choosing yeah. Mandalorian means he's immediately back. So what was the point of him leaving and all that other stuff? It's yeah. kind of strange, but yeah, I don't know. Lacey, what do you, what do you think? Do you think it was too soon for the reunion? I, I totally think it was like, I'm the number one person that would love for him to show up at all times. And just the shows, just him cooing and making adorable things <laughs> like doing adorable things. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think like Peter said, it, it, takes away from that very emotional moment of Luke taking him away. And then you don't really see the growth there from either character because I know we don't know how long it's been, but it doesn't seem like it was that long. Like yeah. it seems like it was maybe like a couple months or something like that. It, it also <laughs> seems like it undercuts like when he was reunited in the, that climactic scene in this episode. They weren't apart that long. Yeah. But it wasn't as an emotional as a scene because, like, you know, there's a rancor and there's all the stuff going. There's these droids. Like, <laughs> like I, I, I felt like I couldn't cry. I, I should cry in that scene. Like, I that that should have made me cry, and I didn't. I didn't have time because it was so. Right. Chaotic. There was a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I, I just think that I would have. I know we've talked about that as this on normal TRB episodes. I feel like he, I thought he was going to show up at the beginning of season three, or yeah, season three of the Mandalorian. Like, I didn't even think we were going to see him in Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. also, there is also um, a window open for Grogu because this was clearly a deliberate writing choice for Fabro Filoni, whoever wrote this line in chapter six, um, saying, like, I'm not, te you know, I'm not teaching him, he's remembering or whatever. So it's possible, you know, Grogu has more training experience than Luke does. Um, you know, Luke Luke took oh, the, sure. the the cliff note crash course and then he's like <laughs> I'm going to put this outfit on him now I'm a Jedi knight. Um where's Grogu's 50? We saw the order 66. Who knows what he's known who, who what he's been trained, who rescued him. There's a lot more to Grogu's story to unfold, but he could maybe have sort of unlocked something that was buried in his brain from trauma that he's remembering like Luke said more than um uh, learning from luke so that's sort of like the way out of he can still do the path of the jedi in a way but without having to be at luke's academy um because who knows if he unlocks everything completely he may have to, have to be the one to teach luke stuff um yeah so so i'm not sure but it's funny here we are talking about grogu in uh, talking about the finale for the book of boba fett and i guess that sort of speaks to itself but i think because this was sort of billed as Season 2.5 of The Mandalorian, I went into it that way. So I've sort of absorbed it that way. Um, but we, we still have to... We haven't even talked really about the Rancor. And holy hell. Yeah, I mean, say what you want about Rodriguez's directing, but yeah. VFX, VFX is a big part of directing in terms of final choices and, and how things are handled. That was freaking amazing. I think it's a combo, too, because we see... Uh, we saw the behind-the-scenes picture with Danny Trejo and... Tamora Morrison yeah, and they yeah. had the head there so like yeah, there is yeah. a head and or body parts of the Rancor that right. exist puppet wise yeah. but yeah yep. no it's nuts and like I think a lot of people from what I saw online and my own reactions as well was the climbing of the tower was so like King Kong Godzilla oh, it was yes. just very cool very yeah. very cool Even although he held Mando, Mando as, as like the damsel <laughs> oh and he tried to bite him oh my gosh I panicked I was like so this is it this is how they're ending it okay I didn't know this is how it's gonna go but it's kind of crazy though how Mando and Boba Fett get so beat up in their, their series <laughs> which you know in comparison when they did the new James Bond's movie James Bond movies he gets beat up here and there and you're like oh it makes it believable for me this they get beat up so much that you're like how are they not how are they still walking like how best car baby i guess so yeah it's that <laughs> whole like oh tony stark is wearing armor so being hit at 300 miles an hour doesn't affect his body right. or brain right. <laughs> right. yeah yeah um but yeah the 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 rancor thing uh i i knew it was coming because you know we had our report on it from october and I was getting a little nervous about it, though, because I was like, all right, so there's only one episode left. Uh, he better ride that freaking Rancor. And then when he did, well, when he takes off in his jetpack 
And he's like, I'm like, he's going to go get that thing. Because they're talking about, oh, our kinetic weapons aren't working and these aren't working. And it's like time to bring in a beast. And, Someone uh, did bring up Slave, Slave One or the Fire Spray. Did we just forget about that ship in this episode? Yeah, well, That's a good question, too. Where is that? Is that so it's just chilling at the palace? <laughs> yeah, I guess, I guess so. so. Yeah. yeah. Um, Imagine if he took all that time to get a Bantha. Not oh. the Rancor, but a Bantha and shows up yeah, after everybody's back. dead. And he's just like, Hey guys! <laughs> yeah, it takes him like a month to get back. He's like, "Hey, what's going on?" Yeah. Um. So the yeah the rancor thing I found interesting because, you know, you watch Return of the Jedi and you're like, "Yeah, kill that beast, kill it, kill it." And now they've like made rancors like, when it gets hurt, you're like, "Oh no, oh no, it's not gonna die, is it?" So Peter, this is a very important question for you for our podcast. Oh yeah. my we god, ve- we're very stop. split on this. <sighs> I would Our like rank- to say I never wanted it to die. My whole life, I've never wanted the Rancor okay. to be killed. All right. I stand by that. Peter, are Rancors cute? They are. I have a French Bulldog. Looks like a Rancor. I have a yes. Rancor he- statue like behind there somewhere. No, he's So right. I've always liked Rancor. So I've All always right. been Team Rancor. <laughs> I know everybody's now... One. Just like you know, recently <laughs> Team Rancor. I've I've right? always been Team Rancor. Me yeah. too. It's so annoying. Oh, uh, that's perfect. I was so was cool perfect. before then. And by the way, yeah. I, I loved when he was like tossing the speeder. He had like that speeder um, mm-hmm. or yeah. land speeder land or whatever speeder? it was. Yeah. yeah. Did he take a bite out of it? He's like, let me try this. <laughs> yeah. And then he just threw it. But whatever, when he threw then, the guy and the guy does a does a Wilhelm scream as he throws him like 500 feet yeah. behind him. Uh, just d- the total destruction. Like, I didn't know what kind of scene we were going to get. It was... It, I, I, it couldn't have been better than what than what we got. Like it was just so amazing, and how it uh, the rancors can take some shots. Like that thing, that thing was taking heavy fire. It's crazy. It's an amazing scene. <laughs> it was really crazy. Although, as like people were saying in the chat, he Danny saying the way the rancor killed the pikes was really cute. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, that was like not cute, but it was funny. <laughs> I laughed. <laughs> <laughs> um, what did you guys think about uh, Fennec Shand killing off the heads of the crime community? That's a big. That, that's a big scene. How she did it too, right? It was very like Batman, but more ruthless. But it yeah, was sweet. curious that it just seemed kind of she did it on her own. But there was a moment that I thought she was going to either open the door to someone else standing there, being like, "It is done," or like call someone <laughs> or something. That is not Boba Fett. Like there was this weird uh, yeah. moment that you're like, is something else going on here? Yeah, Peter, weird. I've been no, theorizing I, that she was going to turn on him, like uh, they do, like everyone fr- does a Fredo to a Michael in, in your gangster oh. stories. Um, but I'm, I, it's it's becoming apparent to me that that's not the case. Um, but that scene was pretty interesting. I I didn't. I thought it was strange at first because I've had a lot of these scenes, as you guys know, like throughout the season i'm like why was it this person and not boba fett and i thought immediately when i watched the scene like why wasn't that boba fett it feels like it Mm. should have been a scene for him to do that being said though after i kind of just let it sit with me a while and kind of accepted okay it was a fennec shan scene it made me feel um like have you ever seen like after a battle is won and like the main heroes are just kind of like looking over the area and there's just like one or two soldiers who are putting that final hit on like one of the guys who are still walking or something like that. Yeah. It felt to me like there was a kind of an off screen thing where Boba's like, I think we got this thing wrapped up. You pick up him, you get, you finish that and you finish that. And Fennec Chan was the one that was sent to wrap up uh, that angle of the, the battle and the way she does it from the top. No one knows what's going on. She hangs the Ithorian. You see yeah. his feet dangling pretty brutal for a show and uh, just everything. Like, I think that the reason I got that is like, it felt like when she was leaving that room, she just had this like kind of thing. Like it's all wrapped up, tying up the loose ends. It wasn't even, no sweat whatsoever. Um, whereas earlier in the battle, I felt that, that all the, the characters portrayed a really good, like, I feel like I'm up against the wire. We're losing, you know, um, whether it be the, the, yeah. the modders or Fennec Shand or black Chris Santon, I felt like everybody at multiple points in the episode did feel they were cornered and losing. And when we finally did get to that scene, I had a vibe from her as a person, mm-hmm. like we got this, this is wrapped up. <laughs> these they pose no threat to me 
you know, boom, 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 and I'm almost having fun killing these guys. So it, I, I felt good about that being Fennec. Yeah. So the chat's really talking about the two Gamorrean guards that they R.I.P. definitely R. I. P. ate it. <laughs> that was <laughs> quite a death. How'd you guys feel about that part? Squirk, 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 squirk. I feel like Peter's <laughs> Peter's side. Peter, you give a very big hey, side they, right there. They, they are original trilogy characters. That, <laughs> that you, why wouldn't you care? Like they, they they survived this long in in the canon, and now do you you, <laughs> you think dead. those are Gamorian guards we have seen from the original trilogy? You think? You yeah, think they not? were. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they were. They were there. Yeah, they were Jabba's. Yeah, I mean, they were at yeah. least. Well, unless, yeah. unless Bib Fortuna like replaced the Gamorians that Jabba had in the five years, I, I, I because I think they were so skinny and they look buff or something. I thought <laughs> I just never took them as like ones we may oh. have seen that lost weight. I just always saw them as like replacement guards. Well, James, like Bib Fortuna kept himself in such ran. good shape that he's like, you guys have to also <laughs> be in good shape. That's true. That's true. <laughs> He was doing. Well, what his, do you, uh, speaking of death, what, what did you think about? Is, is Cad Bane dead? Oh yeah, but that shot, by the way, where he's laying on the ground and he's looking up at the camera, is a beautiful shot. <laughs> yeah, with the hat over there. Yes, yeah. and mm -hmm. there's another beautiful shot where the sun's like behind Cad Bane and it's like kind of like going across him like this. Some he had the most yeah, beautiful yeah, yeah. shots were Cad Bane, although his eyes are really reflective. And in the yeah. beginning of the episode, you can see the camera crew in his eye. I kind really? of. Oh yeah, I saw I that. I yeah. don't hate that. That means he's real. That means he's practical. No, I, I, it was just very interesting because you no, don't I usually see that. They usually take it out, and so someone you could someone see the ring out, light and everything. Or someone the light. way more observant than me pointed out that his breathing mechanism light was still blinking. Uh, oh yeah, uh, you saw that, Peter. So I watch um, the episode another time with the audio description track. So oh yeah, yeah. Th this is um, that, that sometimes you can get information that like is not yeah. clear. Um, and in that track, this well, is what I've been saying. First, yeah. Uh, first of all, when it zoomed in on him or like, uh, the camera went over him, you could hear the blinking of his, um, That's whatever the, the thing is, the apparatus. His, the apparatus. And, um, I, I didn't think anything of it the first time I watched it, but when you watch the audio description track, it like, it was like, yes, or it's like the device on his, whatever is blinking or, or like it described it so i was like is that important enough to describe in that scene like is there nah, something going on there true true so i think right, he's they have to type up those cues to then be put yeah, on for subtitles i mean yeah yeah i i for anybody who doesn't know um i listened to an episode of a podcast where, that is based around audio and one of the things that they were talking about is how that type of stuff even came to uh, fruition it was like you know a person who was going to see like these marvel movies or whatever and they they would work with these people who would describe the movies to him, but they always did a poor job. And he, you know, this particular person like met a really cool person, and they've been, you know, like this ever since because he does such a good job at describing the situations. And they together kind of created this whole community of having audio description things in television and stuff like that. So it has it's more it has to do with like blind uh impaired people you know yeah. uh being able to kind of enjoy the show and when i'm thinking of it of like i'm not thinking of it as like what's important i'm kind of thinking of it like always as what's important what are details in this shot that like people might notice it's not like oh we we want you to notice that it's beeping but it's something like in this scene we've described that he's laying there and the yeah. shot is panning out Right. Um, here are some other details that we can fit into this moment that listening to the audio description. That's always the vibe that I've gotten is there. It doesn't matter what is going on. They're just trying to paint you the pictures so that you can visualize it. The, all the details. I, I hope he's possible. still, I hope he's still alive. Cause I, he's so good. Yeah. He looked so good. Corey Burton I, sounds fantastic. I, like, I agree with that, but I, I also think if you're going to kill off Cad Bane, how better do you want it to be? You're, you're not wrong. Like bring him wrong. back to life and and do the whole like Star Wars thing that's, and that's kind of become a that, thing now. That's but an important like, thing because you know, Peter. I don't know if like you like the Tuscan stuff, but yes, you know, yeah. So Boba Fett sort of um, changed how he went about things because of how the Tuscans went about things, and, uh, and so on the cerebral side. 
But then on, in the physical nature, he wound up being able to defeat Cad Bane, not with his jetpack, not with his knee rockets. He did it with the damn gaffy stick. And I thought that was such a cool, like, ah, they, they did yeah. sort of keep the Tusken Raiders important because it saved his life quite literally at the end by using that stick on Cad Bane, which Cad Bane may have prepared for every other thing that Boba Fett had. He was so focused on that armor. He's talking to Ka- Cobb Vanth. Ah, too bad you don't have that armor. And Bob Boba Fett's like, I, I got my armor. You almost like, said oh, yeah, Boba armor, Fett. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's uh it's getting late. inside joke. Um, but he 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 gets him with the stick in the chest, and uh, but I I I I don't know. What do you think, Peter? I hope he's still alive. I, I like the character. I still want to see more. I feel like he's dead. Um, the, the the other thing I I I almost didn't want to tell you is the audio description track also said before that that you can see the life. Um, disappear from his body is what it ah. said. So interesting. interesting. Yeah. Um, but 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 quick tip: any Star Wars nerds out there, you like. There's sometimes there's like characters that are not named. You can find them in the audio description track. Like there's tons of details that like yeah are not just like someone describing. Like it's not just some like they have the script, they have the information, and they're like putting stuff there that like isn't available. Like the way. ant droids. I didn't know that they yeah. were called ant droids unless they had the subtitles on. Yeah, sure, it's a sure. great, great point. Great call. Uh, there's uh, another, another thing... name for the droid that shows up. The ones that are chasing them down the streets. There was a name for it that showed up in the. Something. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, okay. no, no, no. They they said it in the episode. They no, said I know, this. but it came up because I couldn't pick up what she had said. But they. Oh, yeah. I Yeah, right. I agree. So that... Fun fact, because we didn't cover Easter eggs. That was a. That was a re- repurposed a design from Attack of the Clones, which was kind of cool, you know? Like, they never sense. ended up using these particular uh, droids for that movie, but it was a lot in some of the original artwork and stuff, and so they're kind of guys... repurposing it here. Did you guys catch the Darth Vader line Easter egg? I don't no. think so. So the, ma- <laughs> the Major Domo goes, um, we'll dispense with the pleasantries. Uh... Uh... And I believe his first line in Return of the Jedi is you may dispense with the pleasant trees, Commander. I'm here to put you back on schedule. And that's such a like like standout Vader line to me, because who says that? You may dispense with the pleasant trees. And then you have this comical uh major domo guy. If I may. Just... Is yeah. the major domo <laughs> and Pelimoto gonna get together? Has she moved on yeah. from Jawas to the totally. Major Domo? Yeah, yeah, they're probably, I mean, they're probably sharing a timeshare with Frog Lady and, and Frog Husband. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another thing that the audio track confirmed is she does lose the tooth when she goes yeah. flying out of the <laughs> that thing that she spits out is the tooth. So, in case you're wondering. Wow. <laughs> um, man, I actually feel like there's a lot in this episode that we still have not talked about. Like, for instance, we really didn't talk about our thoughts on the droids these giant like mecha droids walking through the city and having to figure out how we're going to get through these shields like were you guys vibing any of that or were you like this doesn't feel star wars or like what was going on with with your thoughts i thought they were like big droid decas basically i kind of, I kind of hate when they're like when they introduce in a it usually is video games more than movies or tv shows but characters that are like so overly par- powerful and invincible in 99% of way like I don't know it just it, it just is it more annoying than fun as an adversary in a in a in media for yeah me? yeah <laughs> I'm with you on that and it's like the also, dark saber should be able to go through it but it I, should, I understand yeah. their reasoning <clears throat> yeah I do like that Manda was still struggling with it um but because you feel like they're going to build up to a moment where he masters it and there's going to be some big Ludwig Gorenson music swell in Mandalorian and he's going to be like an epic user of the Darksaber. But <laughs> I don't know if this is an Easter egg or not, but the eyes of those things remind, remind me a lot of HAL 9000 from 2001. Totally. Yeah, you, you're vibing that too. Uh, and then yeah. seeing the Rancor up close, like punch it out. Uh, <laughs> puts his thumb through it. Yeah, and the right. big robot that's in Wally, the big police droid, or the big oh, yeah. thing that's in the ship that's <clears throat> like taking over the ship from the captain. And how about, how about the, the sanctuary becoming an actual sanctuary? I thought that was pretty funny. Oh, <laughs> no. 
That was, I mean, we definitely. There, what a wasted com- character. I was going to say that Garza. they totally tied that off oh, yeah. as just being like, we saw the explosion and we're like, wait, how the heck, you know, that seemed like a loose end, but there maybe there's more to the story. Doesn't seem that way though. And then in Charred. this one, it's just like, that was it. That's exactly how it ended. Yeah. Pretty yeah. crazy. Sometimes I feel like fans want too many characters to survive though. Like some- She was such a cool character though. I know, but it's Star I Wars. Felt- I felt like with this series and I feel like this is the critique from a lot of fans is that they start with all these like really cool things that you're like, oh, could it go this way? Could it go that way? And then it goes exactly how you think it's going to go. And that's why you're like, I don't know if I feel satisfied by this. True. Because yeah, my whole thing with her was I was like, oh, what is she involved in? Who is she working with? What's going on there? And then they had the assassins at the beginning of the whole series that never come back again. We never see them again. Oh, yeah. They were just hired by somebody and then they kind of. Later reveal that then Jabba shows up people, and he gives yeah. a rank or the Jabba, the huts show up and they, they give the rancor and then they're gone again. So they're not in the episode. It's, it was a lot of like here and gone and we're here there was, and we're leaving. They also mm-hmm. was a, there was a very specific scene that we pointed out was like, why are we showing Chris Anton sitting in the sanctuary and having this big anger towards the Trandoshans, you know, and then he, you know, they have this big scene and she calms him down and all this other stuff. And, it's like, okay, well, maybe that's going to play out later. And it never really did. He never got, he never went one on one or like, you know, actually killed Trandoshans, you know, kind of, I think he like yet. ripped an arm off or something at that point. I know it's maybe yet, but it was weird when they're like, first of all, the battle tactics we mentioned that earlier were all kind of strange. It's like, I've got a guy like 20 blocks that play, way and another person like 20 <laughs> blocks that way. There's no way someone can sneak up on us. It's like, well, obviously there is like tons of ways that people could get there. Um, but I thought it was weird that they put Chris Anton in the Trandosian area, like of all places, like that's the place you chose. Like he seems like someone who could get very distracted there or ganged up on. Well, maybe they you know? felt like because word gets around they heard what he did to them and uh, they wouldn't like try to try anything with him. I don't know. I guess so. But when they, when they said he was in the Trandoshan territory, I thought, Oh, is this a cue? Is this a callback to something we saw in the show earlier? earlier. Yeah. This is going to lead. I thought he was getting killed too. When he, when he got like piled on, I thought he was finished. Yeah. That was a very zombie apocalypse type shot to me, at least. Is that like, kind of like buried? Like, no, when you watch the walking dead and you're like, Oh, they may get out of it. Oh, oh, no. the horse, the horse in season one. Oh, no, I don't care about dead. the horse. I do. That was a terrible <laughs> scene. <laughs> the, the, I care more the about the animals than again? the people. Yeah. What, what about the banthas? Like they were killing banthas left and right this season. It was they like, really yeah, not cool. that was not cool, man. Not cool. <laughs> Once you Did brush the, uh, the banthas teeth and make them like, like humanize them in a way, I don't want to wag their tail anymore. for some meat. Yeah. 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 Did the uh, major domo like long winded joke of him writing on the tablet and coming out and negotiating? Did that land for you guys? Was that a, a good, solid comedic moment break moment of I levity in the episode for you? I, you did I, like it. I, yeah. I, I liked it too, even though I thought maybe I knew where it was going. I still enjoyed yeah. it because it was he Boba was so Fett funny. Yeah. I think John was right on the money earlier when he said that this episode made me like people more that I found annoying at first. Like Pelimoto, I didn't like to begin with, but she has grown on me so much yeah. in the season. By the end, I was like, she's one of my favorite people in this episode. Yeah. And then he was another one. Then the beginning of the season, I was like, oh, he's like irking me so much. And then he was so funny in this episode. Yeah, for sure. By the way, yeah. the mayor was not on vacation. I called it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that guy killed, died huh yeah. that guy oh. was like oh my bad we weren't supposed to kill people <laughs> those big like big bird looking sesame street feet just with the felt yeah. on them dangling oh. from the ceiling <laughs> Star Wars is so, it's so silly you know you gotta remember that it's so silly sometimes but um, I um, let, I also wanted to mention one of the yeah. uh, part of the, the episode I did like grogu going face to face with the rancor but it felt weird when i'm like we just got this scene like five minutes ago <clears throat> did you guys not yes no we also you know got it I'm with ray and the rise of skywalker what do you mean yeah i no 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 Lacey. i what i'm saying is like we had we had a big droid 
and it's fighting the Mandalorian. And then we get these shots back and forth of Grogu and it's slow motion and he's using the force and he's building up. And I'm like, oh, they're making a big like he saves him moment. And the how could a little creature go up against this big thing that no one else can defeat? And, you know, he I thought it was also kind of weak too. he like pulls like one part of the leg and it seemed to like knock him over, but not kill him. I don't know. I was like, Mm -hmm. what was the whole point of that? I thought he was like going to like crush it or blow it up or disable it and really make it a big thing. But he just kind of like pulled one part out. And then five minutes later, we got the exact same scene again with the actual impact of him stopping the rancor and and putting him to sleep and all that stuff. uh, And I was like, we already did this. Like, why did my you take, show the scene twice? My, my take on that is the difference between maybe a dark side user and a light side user where he was trying to channel aggression to tear that thing apart. Whereas with the Rancor, he was trying to put it at peace and he was stronger at being able to put that giant beast to, to at peace and rest than tearing apart a droid. So I feel like maybe he's channeling more of his light side than when like two years ago he was, holding up that beast with like some dark side energy. So Mando could kill it. Now he's doing things a bit differently. That's how I saw it. Yeah. I mean, if that is ultimately the goal, I would have almost rather him killed the mud horn back in chapter two, instead of (laughs) also, it's kind of weird. Like he picks him up and then like Mando sticks like a small pocket knife in his neck, and he's like immediately dead, you know? (laughs) So Looking back, I would almost rather have Grogu use that dark side to kill the Rancor. It would have made all the emphasis of him being like even more like dark or having a bad past. Mm. And now instead of killing the Rancor, he saves the Rancor, puts the right. It would have been like a longer arc. But they tried to take that idea and concept and shove it into this one episode. Then I guess is what you're saying. I don't know. It felt a little weird to see it twice, like back to back. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's I a perfect time. Yeah. It's a perfect time for us to spend at least just a couple minutes before we leave to speculate on what happens in the future, whether that's with the Book of Boba Fett or the Mandalorian. So, uh, Peter, we'll we'll kick it off with you. Um, do you have any speculation? Do you think there's going to be more Book of Boba Fett? Uh, do you think that Boba Fett will be <laughs> in the Mandalorian? And where do you think where do you think this is all going with you know Grogu with the light side, dark side, Mando? Anything you want to throw out there? For speculation. Okay, I have an insane theory. To, to I love it. By. Okay, so I think everybody just assumes that Din, the Mandalorian, is going to be the person that is going to lead Mandalore. He has the, the dark saber, But I think like we're forecasting that way too early. Like That seems too obvious, which honestly for this show, maybe that's... <laughs> maybe that's where... Maybe that is where... We're kind of learning. It just <laughs> but, seems likely. But... Um, I was thinking in two episodes ago when the armorer was on screen and she, she opened this cabinet, she there was the mythosaur uh, signet there. And she said, uh, legend had it that the mythosaur would rise up and herald a new era of Mandalore. Sadly, that's just legend. And at first I was like, oh, maybe the mythosaur is still alive, but I don't think that's the case. Now, what I'm going to propose here is that maybe Din his goal, his end game here is not actually to lead the new Mandalore. Maybe, maybe this is all setting up a swerve that like eventually, you know, through many seasons of TV that Boba Fett's learning, you know, he, he thought he wanted to be a crime boss. He decided he didn't want to be a crime boss. Now he's going to learn that like, he doesn't know about his Mandalorian legacy uh, from his father. He's, he, he needs to embrace that and whatever. And maybe he's going to learn that his, his purpose is actually to be the mythosaur because that's a signet uh, to rise up and herald the new era of Mandalorian. Oh, yeah. I, I actually don't think it's a crazy theory. And I, I think, I think one of these episodes, if not actually said it to John and Lacey, but I think I threw it out like at the last minute, I'm almost on the page that uh, mindset right now. And this was a couple weeks ago that they might be leading Boba Fett up as, you know, like I'm going to be the leader and I'm going to rule uh, with respect and all this other stuff that like somehow this whole story and this whole adventure we're going on is just to understand that Boba Fett, this character we saw in Empire Strikes Back 
is going to be the ruler of Mandalore at some point. We need to have that change happen. We need to recognize him and understand him as a leader, someone who uh, can, you know, um, uh, not just be a ruthless killer and on his ho- own. You know, he can have that community, build that community, and understand what it takes to rule a people. So, this being the first step in that path, if that ultimately is the goal, this is a good first step. This season of the show makes sense there. Man, it's uh, it's interesting because. <laughs> Yeah, Bo Katan, like we still have to figure out what her deal is. Like everyone, like I've been speculating, Mad Queen just becoming obsessed with the dark saber, and maybe um, there were some tendencies there. Like when she grabbed that guy by the throat, and uh, there there was some aggression there towards her. Uh, it's a, it's not a bad theory though, Peter. I have ne- I haven't heard that from anyone either because there's some theories that you know there are good theories or bad theories that you're like, ah, hey, that's been tossed around. Mm-hmm. I have not heard anyone say that one. So if that comes yeah. true. You're the guy. It's, it's on you. Well, I also think that this show, this Mandalorian verse, is a lot about family and mm-hmm. like you, you know, with with Boba Fett, he's been trying to create his own tribe. He's trying to, uh, you know, mimic what he had with the Tuscans that right. he lost. And uh, I think he learned <laughs> through events of the season that um, you know maybe. Starting a crime, uh, a tribe in the crime world is maybe not the best thing because you can't trust everybody. You know, there's no honor amongst thieves except for the ones that, like, actually you respect, you know, was built on respect. Yeah. So maybe it's building to like he, he, he needs to realize that his tribe needs to be family, needs to be or I don't know. Maybe I'm pulling, maybe I'm stretching things a little here. And maybe, I don't know, it seems by the, the reaction to, but the season above that maybe that's not where they're going, but I don't know. I, I think you're dead on that. The theme of this season has been family and uh, building that attachment, if you will, like giving us that, that moment with Grogu is a more poignant way of saying like, do you choose the loner savior or do you choose like the attachment and the family aspect of it? And Grogu chose for that reason and then we go back and re- revisit boba fett who is in a place right now that he's again i said this at the early like he's against what he used to be which is cad bane you know and he's saying no i'm not a loner i'm not a killer i i am a leader i have these people they have my back i do it with family that's how it works and uh and even more so than that like the name of the episode uh having to do with honor and stuff it's like we see mando at one point being like I believe that creed. Yes, I do. This is the way I stand here with you. Like those types of things are things that I just think generally, I don't want to say fans, but like watchers of any television program are going to be like, yeah, "Yeah, cool. I believe in that. And we wouldn't always necessarily do it ourselves, but we'd like to see our heroes do that. So I think the family aspect rings true in this show. Uh, very, very much as much as it did in Mandalorian, and in a lot of cases, as much as it does in Star Wars. You know what I mean? We we stand together. That's the three of us versus everybody else out there, but because we'll always have each other, kind of thing. Yeah, um, Lacey, I know we had a uh, super chat we had to get to that's been out there for a while, right? Oh yeah, yes. So we have a couple. First, we have Ryan Wara. Hey Ryan, how's it going? Thank you so much for the super chat. He said, Thanks, "I don't buddy. get how when it's all over, Boba says being the Daimo Daimo is in his place. <laughs> he was so determined to rule and protect those people. He fights and fights and fights for the city. And when it's all over, he's like, meh, no thanks.' Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we felt the same. It's just, it's kind of random." uh next up is trey thank you so much for the super chat trey Thanks, he said trey. so in master and apprentice there are colon crystals that can be used to make shields that stop lightsabers oh oh yeah yeah yeah. interesting are they really called colon crystals Co- colon i don't know i can't remember i only like read it i don't know maybe i heard it in an audiobook or something like that <laughs> am i saying that wrong <laughs> Sometimes you got to cleanse. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Next is Ryan Moore. Thank you, Ryan, for the super chat. Who said, I counted 72 pikes killed in the finale. Someone is going to come for payback. 
Yeah. I, I think Hot Shots where... part do it? I, I honestly think that's where this is leading. Like, I think this drug war syndicate thing is just beginning. And I yeah. think that that's what we're leading into with this kind of like crossover stuff. But we'll see how it goes when yeah. it's kind of crazy to think, OK, Rangers was originally going to be part of this. Now it's not. So what does that yeah. mean? But they were in this, but they weren't. Uh, then you have the Ahsoka stuff that's coming. So how is that going to play into it? Because she was also in this and then now she's not <laughs> like, yeah. where is that stuff? Because it's all going to intersect. They've said that. So. I guess the question is, are these stories kind of going to be on their own trajectories or are they all going to meet at once and do like an Avengers type meetup where they're all fighting mm -hmm. the same person? It's going to be right. interesting. Um, the other thing I wanted to throw in here wasn't a super chat, but bearded stay puffed guy said, thanks guys. I'm so pumped to win the helmet. I never win oh. anything. Hey, He's oh, the yeah, winner right. of our man hey, code. Good job, buddy. Um, you, win, you won this. Best on the trip. <laughs> you know, you know, I said we were talking a little bit about the the uh, it seems weird that he changes his mind at the last second kind of thing. And I threw out like this idea, you know, that that sometimes in movies people get through the journey or whatever. And there's a lot that even happened in this season of show that you can point to that kind of stuff like uh, like Mandalorian going to Grogu. He went he came all this way to give him that thing. And at the last minute. He gets deterred and changes his mind and says, OK, I'm, I'm going to do something else. Um, and, you know, so many times we see a character work really hard to achieve something. And when they get there, they maybe find out the truth or they maybe find out a, a greater purpose or something. And then it's almost pleasant in a way sometimes to see them uh throw it away you know what i mean they're like mm. oh i didn't i didn't know that is what i've been striving for this whole time plot twist and then they say if that's the case i'm never gonna be that you know kind of thing and they can walk away from that so to have i don't know i i feel like it's gonna take a little bit of time to kind of process what is boba fett's re-watching the episode a couple times what is it through this that made him say this isn't for me uh, but I think once we kind of land on that and understand it, we're going to respect Boba Fett in that position saying, you know, I stood I stood my ground. I did what I said I was going to do. I freed this area. But at the end of the day, now that I've experienced it. I don't I don't know, you know what I mean, that this is my purpose. I'm going to hand it off to somebody else. Feel good about what I've done and uh, leave this town uh, free as we've seen in the comments we keep getting like Freetown wasn't mentioned enough. You know? Well, that's because yeah. I said, remember a couple episodes ago, I was talking about how they kept bringing it up. It was like, the, I could, kept laughing. Cause he's like, it's Freetown now. It's Freetown. <laughs> yeah. Which dude had a big role in this episode too. You know? Yeah. Yep. W Earl Brown. Uh, for sure. All right. Uh, any, any last thoughts before we uh, do some plugs and, and hop out of here? I cannot wait for the Kenobi Shobi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to miss I, doing uh, these live, like, you know, watching Star Wars every week. That's the big thing for me. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I think if I, it, if I had like a, fun, yeah, Freetown, it's Freetown now. It's Freetown now. <laughs> <laughs> I think if there is like an upside to this, like it's one of those things, like I think chapter five was so good and chapter six was so good, you know, that, when we see that underwhelming final episode, we go, Oh man, it wasn't as, as crazy as we thought, thought or what we hoped for. I love but it. I'm we, really I, I know, but I'm saying like, it wasn't, you know, better than, you know, I don't know, whatever. But my point being, we, you always kind of forget the middle ground of shows where maybe an episode or maybe portions of that episode didn't carry very well. And I think when we look back at uh mandalorian season one mandalorian season two book of boba fett season one and three and ahsoka and when we look back at this whole journey the book of boba fett will have so many great and crazy memorable moments that we're just going to remember that first season is like oh that was the season where we saw boba fett rise to power and we got all those crazy scenes with the rancor and all sorts of other stuff and it's like we will think back fondly on this season it's just hard to rate it on a week to week. Like, how did we feel about this particular episode? In my opinion, and I, I that's why I still like the way this season came out, because I think at the end of the day, I'm just going to remember the awesome, cool bits and pieces from this show 
as a collective that led to eventually that culmination with Luke and Ahsoka and, and uh, the rebels characters and, you know, and, and Mando and Grogu and Boba Fett, and they're all there, you know, whatever it ends up being, this is going to be one portion of it that is not going to be like, well, that was just, you can skip that. I think we're going to say, you know, watch it all. You know, that's such a lovely point. And all I can think about is (laughs) like, (laughs) a star wars meeting where they're doing some like you know those planned meetings they always have in the movies where they're like what is it it's the death star and then the guy in the back just be like it's free town now <laughs> 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 like him just po- like memes of him popping up in like really terrible situations like... i'm picturing like uh uh galen urso being like it's called the death star and then the dymo being like uh if i may we actually call it the DS1 battle station. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right. That's oh I think that's a good note to uh take us toward the end here. Um Peter, before we uh jet, um, first of all, thanks for stopping by, man. This has been a lot of fun. Really appreciate it. Uh welcome back anytime. We would love to have you. We should um, have you and Kitra back for uh TRB. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Um so where can people find you, your vlog, everything? Uh, just unload all those plugs to the people. <laughs> On YouTube, it's Ordinary Adventures. We cover theme parks, Disney, Star Wars, cruises sometimes. Um, it's a lot of fun. Check it out. Um, you can follow me on all social media at Peter Serretta. And uh, I am editorial director over at SlashFilm.com where I do a daily podcast called Slash Film Daily, which is a lot of fun nice excellent very cool um and yes you um can find us on the resistance broadcast uh we're going to be going back to our normal schedule soon so it's going to be um mondays and we're we're not sure but maybe wednesdays or thursdays but either way it's gonna be back to two episodes a week until the next live action star wars show comes out um starwarsnewsnet.com for your star wars news reviews editorials information and more uh, patreon.com slash resistance broadcast uh, thank you to everybody who supports us because we're able to do shows like this the the extra podcasts that we're doing our regular podcast and all of our exclusive videos we do over at patreon thank you for all of your support and everything we're able to do thanks to you uh, special thank you to our top tiers generals and spice runners first our generals a shout out to you carmelo andrew staley jeremy myers john reese jetta rosewater paul olson oliver lewis frank grande Darth Hurricane, John Trollton, Nick Kratz, Christian Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Nathan Shank, Danny, Mike Ramore, Matt Heath, and Val Trichkoff. Thank you. And Spice Runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Double C Chris, Kendall Gelnar, Ryan Wara, Dave Hornack, Micah Harrison, and Thomas Hennessy. Thank you all. Um, we will see you soon. We'll be back on the Resistance broadcast on Monday morning. You can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and at starwarsnewsnet.com and my movie podcast just like the movies uh we just did an episode um uh, well we're doing an episode on speed uh in about uh two weeks so look for that and we just um put out a recent episode as well so go check that out uh lacy how about you so first we have a uh, one more super chat from ryan Wara. thank you so much ryan who said thanks, thanks for making ryan. the book of boba fett even more enjoyable guys i had a lot of fun these past seven weeks yeah it's been a blast i can't wait for kenobi that's gonna be bananas Whew. it's gonna be crazy for uh you sure. guys can thank find you, me ryan. on twitter and instagram probably talking about freetown for the next few months <laughs> <laughs> at lacy gillerin freetown it's called freetown james are you uh, oh, wait lacy you're changing your handle to at freetown is that what you said no, at least oh. you are in. Oh, okay. okay. Handles are hard uh, to get. I'm not doing that. <laughs> James. Um uh I actually am changing my handle to Freetown so that I can say uh it's Freetown now. <laughs> 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 uh, no, my actual handle at Meyer Trunks on Twitter and both uh, Twitter and Instagram. Yeah. All right. Thank you all so much. Uh Peter, thanks again, man. This has been awesome. Really appreciate it. Yes. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's been great. And thanks to everybody who's joined us all season. It's been uh, a lot of fun. We appreciate you making us a part of your Wednesday nights. And uh, we'll do this again the next time a show rolls around, which appears to be Obi-Wan Kenobi. So we look forward to that. But until then, we'll see you on the podcast and around the base. Uh, So until then, as always, we'll see you around, kids.